now, Dean of Robert Kennedy College, who's joining us live from Zurich. Uh, thanks for coming along. So, you're pretty optimistic uh, still, always an optimistic man, but particularly so when it comes to this Greek bailout. You believe this is the, the best solution for Greece. There's still some way to go, though. Greece is very far from being out of the woods, so how can you be so enthusiastic about, what's, about the prospects now? Well, indeed, there are still some steps to be taken. There is still this debt swap which has to occur on the 10th of March, and there are still some ratification to be done also at the European level. So let's not forget that some of the parliaments have still to vote at this package, so it's literally not done. That said, we have averted a major disaster for Greece, and that's why I'm so optimistic. We are taking away one of the big incognita on the markets, and I really see we have avoided something which could have had terrific negative impacts on not only Greece, but Europe as a whole. So that's why I think there is reason to be optimistic now, and we're going to see markets react very positively to this. Not yet, because there is still some uncertainty, but we will see this obstacle going away and much of the angst of the fear that the market had about a euro collapse to disappear. But the situation in Greece, uh, if anything, has surely only delayed the inevitable, not averted a disaster. Uh, there is still a lack of competitiveness in the Greek economy, uh, internal devaluation just isn't happening at the pace that needs to happen to bring things back into line. We had the, that uh, private um, uh, uh, confidential IMF report which was leaked this week suggesting that the debt to GDP ratio could still be up to 160 percent throughout to 2020. I mean, if Greece doesn't really push hard on all these reforms, the same issues are going to come back again and they're going to undermine market confidence again. It is a difficult plan. A lot of sacrifice from Greece, uh, a lot of things to be done. But I find it a bit unfair now to already say the, this implementation risk, so this is not going to happen. It's impossible to be done. I think uh, for the short term, for now, it was very important to avoid a default. Because what I found pretty much surprising, and I see a lot of uh, economists and experts uh, uh, giving interviews and saying perhaps for Greece it would have been better to devalue, to have their own currency, to exit the euro and going back to the, to the drachma. And I think that's pretty much wishful thinking because it's completely impossible to go overnight uh, from the euro to the drachma and essentially go to a currency which has very little demand for a country which has also very limited exports. So from the immediate term we have to give it a bit of time to concretize. There is a plan, the plan is solid, it requires a lot of work, it requires a lot of sacrifice but just saying that the plan will most likely collapse uh, it is a bit premature and a bit negative I would say. Yeah, yeah, but just uh, looking a little bit more short term David, as optimistic as you are, the likely activization of collective action clauses and even the trigger of CDS, I'm just wondering what sort of volatility and headaches it could cause for investors and how you would strategize your uh, investment uh, plans. Well, I, I do see still uh, some uh, potential risk ahead, particularly if some of the pieces of the puzzle don't come together. So if there is an obstacle, if there is something, if there is uh, some bad news about the acceptance of this deal, which has to achieve more than 62% of the credit to accept it, even though they are changing the law, and that will force more participation. There are still bumps ahead, so it's not all clear. But we have seen yesterday these 13,000 on the down, and we haven't seen such a big spike in European equity. So in in terms of value, we still have value in the European markets and we still have companies that regardless of what will happen on those still uncertainty, will do well in the future. So I would say if in America it's probably now a bit overpriced, the whole market, in Europe we have still opportunities. So of course we're going to have obstacles, we're going to have possibility of this great default swap, which I don't think we will trigger even if there is a slightly bigger air cut. I think there will be some sort of solution in that regard as well. But what is important is, let's not forget that the alternative what we have now, which is a plan of, of which the implementation is far from sure, and I agree on that, but the other opportunity, the other situation would have been a default. And a default, yeah. whatever we say, would have not been able to be contained at the moment. It would have spread throughout Europe and would have caused a major, major collapse in the financial system in Europe, much, much uh, more intense than what we have seen with Lehman Brothers.
Yeah, right. But in the event uh, the CS CACs uh, are activated and also uh, if CDS is triggered, then what's ironic is that hedge funds have protected themselves by ultimately buying into credit default swaps. Uh, what would you advise investors to do to hedge themselves against this potential but very real scenario? Well, it, it, it remains to be seen if, uh, if a default will be triggered. In some ways, uh, some of the hedge funds were hoping that Greece would default because the credit defaults well, would give them 100% of the loss and not just a part of that. So in terms of, of, of hedging, there isn't really much to do if you are in that situation than just uh, look at the situation and be very careful. Perhaps hedging with, uh, with other things like commodities and gold and so on. But in terms of credit defaults well, hedging, I don't see really a lot of uh, opportunities more than a wait and see situation or where this new deal will be configured, will it trigger a credit for swap or not. There isn't really many stories I could suggest for as fund type of things, but for private investor and retail investor, I will still see a lot of value in European equities and as an edging strategy toward all these uncertainties, I will still go into precious metals, including gold, that now are at more reasonable valuation and will really give a protection in case of a major shock that could have still happen perhaps a year down the road given if this plan doesn't concretize in terms of implementation of the promises that have been made. So there is still a risk in the market and my edging will be now true commodity, particularly precious metals. Okay, David, thank you. David Costa, Dean at Robert Kennedy College. So let's look at what's going on on the Europe.